Why is the sky blue? Why do people die when they're killed? Why is Nekoparon labeled as an FPS? These are some of the most important questions that I think about on a daily basis, and frankly, there are some questions in this universe that shall never receive answers, but hopefully that will not be the case for today's video. Imagine a scenario where you're playing an action game. Any game is fine. You're just minding your own business and things are going smoothly, and out of the blue, an enemy hits you once and wipes out your entire health bar. Is this fair? Today, I want to explore a niche aspect of gaming that I always find fascinating. The discussion surrounding a player health seems simplistic, but gets really convoluted once game design is put into consideration. Now, I want to preface that I have no game design experience whatsoever. This video is purely based on readily available information that I could gather. Here is the concept. Every action game has a player health bar. If it reaches zero, it's game over. Now that goes without saying, it's pretty satisfying when you go in and one-shot the enemy Pokémon in the first turn, but not so much if they do it to you. In fact, to prevent this very frustration, turn-based games like Pokémon, Persona, or Slay the Spire will always have the player go first. After all, there's not much player agency if you stroll up to an enemy encounter only to lose on the first turn to the AI's disgusting combo. Check out this pool game from a Yakuza game. The AI gets to go first and just casually sinks all of the balls into the pockets, and the player doesn't even get a single turn. Of course, you might also be thinking about multiplayer. Sure, there are some popular games out there that excel at having a pseudo one-hit kill system, such as the fast-paced Quake. But there is a whole can of worms regarding metas and balancing aspects that completely set them apart from single-player games. So for the sake of simplicity, this video will only focus on single-player games. So let's examine the issue. In order to understand the core issue of the fairness when the player gets one-shotted, we'll need to look at the following different factors. First, is getting one-shotted an intentional game design? Now it goes without saying, on a surface level, getting one-shotted in any game feels cheap and undeserving. However, if the player is in full awareness that an all-or-nothing health system is intentional by game design, they probably won't complain too much. Early pioneers in the history of video games in the form of arcade games like Pac-Man or Super Mario always had a pseudo one-shot system for the player. There was no health bar. Sure, players knew that their game can end in one unfortunate mistake, but they're playing the game well aware of this. Some other games that have an intentional one-shot system include short indie games intended to be played in short bursts, such as Hotline Miami. But you probably won't feel too frustrated, because at most, you just lost around 10 seconds to a minute of playtime. So let's take a look at the second issue. Is the game balanced around the fact that the player can get one-shotted? Open world games or any AAA releases often have frequent checkpoints. In Witcher 3, sure, Geralt can get one-shotted by his worst enemy, which is fall damage from 6 feet. Save points are set so frequently that you won't really mind it too much, unless you forget to save the game for a couple hours. But let's be real here, that will be totally on you. These games mitigate the frustration of an unfair death by setting frequent checkpoints so players are not losing much progress, even when the loss is from something that the game did not intend. However, it should be said that a part of the reason why the save system exists is because the game is designed to at least have the player slip up a couple times before a game over. But what about games that don't have frequent checkpoints? What about roguelikes? This is a genre of games that I would dare say that I'm somewhat of a specialist in. The permadeath feature of roguelikes is often referred to as one of the most crushing experiences in gaming. Given that the majority of roguelike runs take up to an hour, dying to one mistake having, having progressed so far can be... dejecting. I've certainly felt this way about Dead Cells, a game that this channel widely covers, when I was frankly pulling my hairs out trying to beat 2BC, which is one of the difficult modifiers when I was still relatively new to the game. It goes without saying, unless you're a masochist, no sane person will want to spend an hour playing a game and getting nothing out of it. Putting it into this context, the feeling of fairness is directly tied to how much progress you lost, and how much you are in control of being one-shotted. Some roguelike games try to mitigate instances where the game can appear unfair by implementing a one-shot protection mechanic. The only two games that I know of that do this are Risk of Rain 2 and Dead Cells. Any game with a numerical value for the player's health and some sense of difficulty scaling runs into issues like these. 
In these two games respectively, a single instance of damage can never wipe out 100% of the player's health bar in one fell swoop. Dead Cells sets your HP to 1 so that you at least have a chance to make a counterplay via the Bloodborne-esque health recovery mechanic. In Risk of Rain 2, a gray bar will appear at the very end of your health bar, where a single strike of an enemy will never do more than 90% of your combined HP. Of course, due to the chaotic nature of roguelikes, these systems are by no means perfect, but serves as an indirect way to prevent unfair losses. A question that I constantly look for when playing games is how it handles difficulty. What is a good way to make the game more challenging without arbitrarily raising the difficulty to a point where players are limited to play the game in a very specific way to stand any chance of winning? Sure, you could tune the damage that enemies do to the player, but if enemies do so much damage that it feels like the player gets one-shotted, then it starts to blur the line between good difficulty design and just straight up unfair. The real point of discussion comes if the player being one-shotted is not an intentional game design. Again, taking an example from roguelikes, the tainted lost character in Binding of Isaac represents a design philosophy in which a player that can get one-shotted is put into a game that doesn't revolve around such a mechanic. This character, other than starting out with a one-time use skill that gives a shield, has no health whatsoever, and it is impossible to gain any meaning any form of damage will end your run. The thing is, almost all the other characters have some resemblance of health. The game is designed in a way where randomness is the deciding factor on your run's outcome. Many of its mechanics involve player health, such as chests that you can open but hurts you in the process, or blood banks where you can trade health for coins. These options are not available when you're playing as Tainted Lost since you'll just die. On the rare occasion that I did beat the odds and win as Tainted Lost, a question that I ask myself is, did I win because I became more skilled at the game, or did I win because I didn't run into any BS room layouts and Delirium didn't decide to telefrag me that day? Now you might be thinking, okay, if playing as this character seems a little unfair, then don't play the character. So that question goes into the final factor that we'll look at when evaluating the fairness of getting one-shotted. Is there any value in playing in a mode that may seem unfair? Back to Binding of Isaac. Tainted Loss may not be the most enjoyable character to play, but in order to unlock more items and inch closer to the 100% completion, you have to beat the game with this character. So yes, it may seem a little unfair at times, but there is value in going through it. Now let's take a look at a non-roguelike example. In Nier Automata's insane difficulty setting, any form of damage will instantly kill you. Clearly, the game is not balanced around this difficulty, but there's no additional content or achievements tied to this mode. So this is really only for those that are interested in Nier's gameplay or the, um, plot. So, let's try summing this up. Is getting one-shotted fair in games? Well, the short answer is no, of course not. Who will want their gaming experience ruined by one small mishap? But if I were to provide a more specific answer, then the feeling of fairness is tied to how much progress you lost when you get one-shotted. Games that require a long time of concentration or those with very infrequent checkpoints must ensure that the game functions well enough that players will never run into any bugs or glitches that can harm their abilities to play the game. If an unfortunate bug causes the player to lose an hour worth of progress, that would really suck. How should enemy damage scale as the player progresses through the game? What's a fair amount of health to give to players so that they don't get one-shotted? How much damage should each attack do at exactly what different times? These are questions that I frankly can't answer, but it really goes to show the effort needed behind the scenes to make a game feel fair and rewarding. And that's the end of the script. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go play a bit of my favorite FPS. Give you me a good old rub.